Good morning. I just realized I didn't ask anybody to do the land acknowledgement or the reading. So today it's the all Michael Shaw all day. Woohoo! <laughs> Will you please join me in the land acknowledgement? We, the Congregation of Island United Church of Foster City, acknowledge that our sanctuary sits on the unceded ancestral homeland of the Ramaytush Ohlone, who are the original peoples of the San Francisco Peninsula. We recognize that we benefit from living and working on their traditional homeland, and we affirm their sovereign rights as first peoples. Lovely. Get an A. Welcome to Island United Church of Foster City. My name is Michael Cronin. And I, whoever you are or wherever you are on the journey, if this is your first time coming here, a time returning after being away, if you are in the room, out there in Zoom, or watching us later on the YouTube playback, you are welcome here. And when we say this is a house of prayer for all people, we mean it. It is a house of prayer for all people. No matter where you are on your journey, you are welcome here. Will you join me as we settle into our seats and take a deep breath and get on with the celebration of God? Release that breath too, by the way. And join me in the call to worship. For beloved company, community near and far. For an invitation to love and be loved. For abundant opportunities to begin again. For play that enlivens us. For wisdom that us to expansive living. We give thanks to the Holy One for these sustaining gifts. That the of God, our provider and friend. Nurturing caretaker, your name is holy. May your realm of flourishing bloom in our spirits and communities. Give us each day the spiritual and physical sustenance we need. Forgive us when we get it wrong and cause harm. Open our hearts to compassion for others and bathe all your creation in mercy. Amen. Amen. I invite you to sing in number, uh, number four, 227 in the red hymnal. Now thank we all our God.
The Gospel of Luke, chapter 11, verses 1 through 13, from the Inclusive Bible. One day, Jesus was praying, and when he had finished, one of the disciples asked, Rabbi, teach us to pray, just as taught John taught his disciples. And Jesus said to them, When you pray, say, Abba God, hallowed be your name, may your reign come. Give us today tomorrow's bread. Forgive us our sins, for we too forgive everyone who sins against us, and don't let us be subjected to the test. And Jesus said to them, suppose one of you has a friend, a neighbor, and you go to your neighbor at midnight and say, lend me three loaves of bread. Because friends of mine are on a journey and have come to me, and I have nothing to set before them. Then your neighbor says, leave me alone. The door is already locked and the children and I are in bed. I can't get up to look after your needs. I tell you, though your neighbor will not get up to give you the bread out of friendship, your persistence will make your neighbor get up and give you as much as you need. That's why I tell you, keep asking and you'll receive. Keep looking and you will find. Keep knocking, and the door will be opened to you. For whoever asks, receives. Whoever seeks, finds. Whoever knocks, is admitted. What parents among you will give a snake to their child when the child asks for a fish? Or a scorpion when the child asks for an egg? If you, with all your sins, know how to give your children good things, how much more will our heavenly Abba give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? And I invite you to join me in singing Seek Ye First, number 443. Hunter plays a divorcee in a New York luxury apartment, and she's spinning out of control after she's been watching the news. <laughs> awful, awful. What do they expect to do for us to do with all this information? What am I supposed to do about crack babies? Terrorism? I can't stand those terrorists. They're so mad at everybody. I just wish they'd get over it. Maybe I should adopt a crack baby, send it to a good school, and get a chance of... Oh, shut up. I'm gonna raise an inner city child in this building. I can't stand the people in this building with all their Jeeps and their loafers. They're mean, stuck up. Private school kids will make fun of my crack baby. My crack baby will have no play dates. Poor kid, awful. What do they expect us to do with all this information? What am I supposed to do with all this information? Awful, awful, awful. See. <laughs> <laughs> While the details may be different throughout my life, I have found myself in an internal monologue log loop that has left me with plenty of sleepless night, similar to this, tossing and turning, turning and tossing, counting sheep, hot milk, peanut butter sandwiches, praying. Maybe you've expect, experienced something similar. Will you join me in prayer? Holy God, the events of our day and each of our lives can be overwhelming. 
that can cause us to spin out of control. Help us to slow our minds, to breathe, and to return to you so that we might hear you and your yet still small voice and what it has to say to us. May the words from my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts bring comfort to those who seek it and conviction to those who need it. And may these things be pleasing unto you in your holy names we pray. Amen. These are rosary beads. These rosary beads were given to me by my parents on my confirmation. They had brought them back from Ireland. Now the rosary is a daily devotional in the Catholic tradition, and it's also used um, the night before the internment service of a beloved. And also for some of us who were naughty as a penance after going to confession. So there are many parts and variations to the rosary. You have the sign of the cross and you go around the beads, there's all parts. There's the sign of a cross, the Apostles' Creed, the Lord's Prayer, which is the Our Father, which we call it, Hail Mary and the Mysteries, the Glory Be, Hail Holy Queen, and the final prayer when you return back around, and a closing sign of the cross. They are a vehicle for allowing God to get closer to our hearts and for us to enter into conversation with God. And as I said, if you were a precocious child like me, they were also assigned after penance for confession. And needless to say, I should be an expert on the rosary, but I'm not. <laughs> However, the Lord's Prayer, the Our Father and the Hail Mary have been a source of comfort to me throughout in stressful times throughout my adult life. And much like many things, they can be a rote citation, becoming devoid of the power and the meaning. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee, blessed are thou among the blessed of the womb, Jesus, Holy Mary, Mother, God, pray for us now. The version many of us are used to comes from Matthew 6, where Jesus says, Beware of practicing your righteousness before others in order to be seen by them. For then you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. He tells us in this chapter how to give alms, how to pray, how to fast, how to share the treasure that you behold. Be judgment free to serve God and be free of, weary, of worry. And in the new Revised Standard Version updated, he, Jesus says, pray this way, our Father in heaven, may your name be reported as holy. May your kingdom come, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this today our daily bread and forgive us our debts and as we have forgiven those who are our debtors and bring us not into the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. I remember I had an epiphany moment when I first recited the Lord's Prayer as an adult returning to church and understood the radical meaning in the simplicity of this prayer. In his chapter, The Prayer of the Kingdom from the Secret Message of Jesus, published in 2006, Brian McLaren, who is a pastor and an author, a speaker, a leading figure in the emerging church movement, he breaks the prayer down and it goes something like this, quote, Jesus's prayer doesn't address God as king, but as father not in terms of God's power, but in terms of God's love and relationality. And it addresses God's, God not as my father, but our father. In this sense, the person praying alone in private remembers that spirituality and God's kingdom, while personal, is never individualistic. Jesus doesn't teach us to pray, may your will be done among us disciples as it is in heaven, or even may your will be done in Israel. Jesus's version of the kingdom is a reality that will come to the whole planet. It is in this sense, a universal or pluralistic vision. It's for everyone everywhere, not just for a few elite somewhere. 
And it recalls a pivotal moment in Jewish history during the flight from slavery in Egypt, as they wandered through the desert, the Israelites were provided daily bread in the form of manna, the word which is a humorous play on the Hebrew phrase, what is it? The travelers couldn't save this mysterious food from one day to the next, or it would rot. Each day they had to trust that the next day's food would be provided. Jesus suggests by evoking this story in the phrase daily bread that his followers should see themselves as people on the move, on a journey, in the midst of a new exodus, not settled or stagnant, but moving into a new territory and liberation with dependence on God. And just as we need daily food, so we need daily forgiveness. But more radically, these lines seem to undercut the idea that the coming of the kingdom will involve the destruction of our enemies. We don't pray, forgive our sins and punish those who sin against us. Rather, the prayer engenders in us the hope that we and our enemies will be treated mercifully. This prayer affirms, as we have frequently seen, that God's kingdom is not about revenge but rather reconciliation, seeking God's kingdom and God's justice leads us to pray that God's kingdom will come as a tide of mercy that carries both us and those that have hurt us to new heights, unquote. And you may have heard me speak of the tikkun olam, the repair of the world, a social justice, not only of one's own moral, spiritual, and uh, material welfare, but also for those of the welfare of the society at large. And the sin of the world that needs to be healed and repaired is that between people, not between people and God. It's between people. And McLaren completes his analysis that deliver us from evil. Do not let us be subject to the test as, quote, Jesus' attention being less on the demonic tempting and more on the concrete and social political situation of his contemporaries. And of course, in Jesus' mind, these two are probably more related than they might be for people today. Remember, he wrote this in 2006. That's why I'm more than likely to be in line with Jesus. So the people today who they might believe in the devil and see him as part of a spiritual realm that is often distant from the political realm. And that ends his quote. So in today's version of the Lord's Prayer from Luke, we are not told of the locus of God. God out in heaven. We are not praying for God's will in heaven to be brought here on earth. We are invoking God to inbreak, to indwell. In this sermon, the hardest question Roy M. Terry IV wrote, the prayer invites those participating to an allegiance which stands in opposition to the world, its rulers and its kingdoms and perhaps yourself. It is scary for it calls us away from our individual, individualist, yeah, hello, individualistic notions of God's provision and places us right in the middle of God's self-giving love. This new allegiance incorporates practices which if followed might lead to places we did not expect. End quote. Which begs the question, do we really want to pray like Jesus? And when we ask WWJD, what would Jesus do? Do we really want to walk in his ways, to follow his path and his teachings, or as some would say, take up the cross? For it is a dangerous risk and it is a challenge. It calls for us to speak up against the modern emperors and it threatens the institutions those secular and religious 
that contradict the realm of God. It is daring to speak into existence so that we might fully live into God's realm and God's grace and God's mercy, God's justice for all. And then we have this second part, the parable of the neighbor who won't share the bread, but for the persistence of asking. Jesus' call to keep knocking on the door until it is opened and you are admitted. Questioning which parent would give their child a snake instead of a fish or a scorpion instead of an egg. That could be problematic because unfortunately, Christianity has given a number of its children snakes and scorpions. You can ask any LGBTQ plus person struggling to come out in the midst of doctrines and dogmas of uh, tra uh, conservative traditions that condemn them. Or those who have been enslaved using the Bible to support it. The foothold it has taken with regard to a woman's right to choose and the health of her own body. We knock and we knock and knock and the doors seem to remain locked. No one answering when we know they are inside and they can let us in, but they won't. We aren't getting what we need. And our prayers, they seem to go unanswered. David Lewis, who is a senior pastor of Mount Olivet Lutheran Church in Minneapolis writes, unanswered prayer, in the light of these verses creates a huge crisis of faith. It puts honest believers in a bind between wondering whether God failed or they did. Most of us believing it unfaithful to fault our God, blame ourselves instead. We must not have had enough faith or we didn't have a sufficient number of other Christians praying for us, or we just didn't pray the right way. Me, I certainly don't have the answer to this. I know I've had the dark nights of the soul when I have prayed for this sickness to be taken away, to keep a beloved well or from death, for wars to end and famines to cease, for Russia to quit blockading and diverting wheat and other agricultural products from Ukraine, literally taking our daily bread, or that selfish little something that I want for myself. But in, in spite of those moments, that it seems like those prayers are unanswered, I pray. I pray as an intentional way to connect with God. And my praying can come in many forms. It doesn't have to be like I was told with my hands clasped in a special way, in a special penitence. No, it can come I vacuuming. It can come when I'm washing the floor, working in the garden, volunteering at a food bank or pantry, collecting signatures to bring an early childhood education and care for all. Many of you have knit or crocheted for the day of service. That is a prayer. And of course, as attributed to St. Augustine, those who sing pray twice. And again from David Luce, prayer is more than just asking for things, of course. Prayer is praise, prayer is thanksgiving, prayer is conversation, prayer is questioning, prayer is arguing, prayer is lamenting, prayer is all these things and more. But prayer is also, and perhaps fundamentally, asking God for what we most need and desire, shamelessly. And as we have heard the phrase, God is still speaking, I invite you to consider God is still listening. God yearns to be in conversation with us, in a relationship with us, not transactional, if I do this, I get that, but relational. 
God is a parent who cannot always stop us from doing something that we will do because of our free will. Don't touch that hot stove. Or prevent the atrocities committed by humanity or save us from disease and illness for our life here is temporal and the bodies are fragile things. And death to this body and to this world can be a sort of healing. But in all of this, God is always there through thick and through thin, in sickness and in health, in our joys and our sorrows. God mates us and remains with us in our darkest moments and sufferings, even when others do not. If we believe in the incarnate God, then we know God knows these things and feels these things with us firsthand, even when it is awful, awful, awful. And that is a comfort. And we, with all our nonsense, can pray and give good things. Being God's goodness and mercy and grace in this world, bringing about and ushering in the reign of God. I'll pray for it. Do you pray for it? Let's pray for it. Amen. Let us sing again, Seek Ye First. As we enter into community prayer, I invite us to take a moment of silence for the war that continues in Ukraine, the atrocities that continue to be committed, and also for the victims of gun violence. During this time of community prayer, I invite you to raise your hand, and if you're out in Zoom, I invite you to type your prayer request into the chat window, and Brent will lift it up. And if, when you raise your hand in the room, Brent will bring around the microphone to you, and you may lift up your prayer. Creator God, you call us to serve and love you with body, mind, and spirit through loving your creation and our siblings. Open our hearts in compassion and receive these petitions on behalf of the needs of the church and the world. I invite you to hear our prayers, to share your petitions. Diane. First off, uh... Speak out loud. All right. Uh, so first off, Carolyn Mandry uh, says, good morning to all from Eden Prairie, Minnesota. Okay. And I guess we're not going to walk around and test that, so. Yeah. Be loud. Be loud. Diane, be loud. <laughs> first of all, we need to pray for uh, our friend here. Yes. Celebrating her birthday. Yes. Um, and I have um, three intentions. Uh, 
Um, one is, is is a mother of a my uh, a mother of a friend of my grandson's who has a 14 year old daughter and she just had a stroke. Oh. And she's only 45. So her yeah. family is very sad. Yeah. And there's two ministries that the sisters of mercy support that I that I wanted to offer prayer for because they're both having fundraisers. One is Mercy Beyond Borders, and that is um, they have schools in um, uh, Haiti and Malawi um, to for women, and the other is a uh, Catherine Center, which is a residential program for women uh, coming out of prison. And I uh, go there; they have a safe house of the Sanitary Community. I go there every Wednesday, so I like to offer all of those in prayer. Thank you. I had B. Yeah. Prayer of Thanksgiving when our family is here to celebrate Lee's 90th birthday and she's in robust health. Yes. <laughs> well, okay, well, we're nearly done, but thank you. <laughs> Do we have any? Uh, Alexis has one. Alexis, you can have the microphone. Thank you, Brent. Um, continued prayers for Stephen Headley. He's suffering from cancer. And prayers um, for my sister in law. She's on dialysis. And I'm most of them, she's not doing very well. Thank you. Holy One, we have gathered these prayers, these prayers that have been spoken, the prayers of greetings from Carolyn for Lee and her 90th birthday, and that her robust health continues. For a Diane's friend who is in recovery from a stroke and the family who is having problems and sad grief around that, they help them find healing and joy as she becomes healed. For the Sisters of Mercy and their programs, Mercy Beyond Borders and Catherine Center, for Bob as he continues with his health issues, for Stephen and his cancer, for Alexis's sister and her dialysis. May you bring healing to those who need it. May you be comfort to them. May you be a source of comfort to the families who surround them. May you find and bring joy to our lives. May you help us know that you are here. May you help us know that you are here. We have received these prayers and we Bless them and hold them and release them unto you. We ask that you make us faithful stewards and people who are stewards of the fragile bounty of this earth, that you entrust us with the riches that you have given. We lift up these prayers to you and ask that you hear us now as we speak the Lord's Prayer, the prayer of Jesus as each of us knows it. Our God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy presence come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is dominion and the power the glory forever and ever. Amen. The communion, this table, this table from which many have been cast aside and been unwelcome. This is a table that throughout the ages is a place where time and place conflates, where the company of heaven 
for those in this room and those in this, who are yet to come, come together and we commemorate a life that was taken unjustly, but we also celebrate a life that continues through us and a life of resilience and a message of love. We needn't believe anything or be a member of this church to be welcome at this table. We don't require that you recite a creed or have done something just right so that you can come up and partake. All you have to do is be willing to have a piece of bread and juice and share in community a meal of love. I will pra pass around the elements. story we know goes Jesus was in the upper room with his friends one of whom he knew would betray him the other he knew would deny him he knew what was to come but he gathered them together in a meal of love and cast no one aside and he took the bread and he broke it giving thanks and he offered it to his friends and he said, this is my body, it will be broken, but it is given for you. Each time you eat of it, remember me. And he took the cup and he gave thanks for it. And he offered it to him. And he said, this is the cup of my love, is the cup of the new covenant. Each time you eat of this bread and you drink of this cup, Remember me, remember all the things that I have taught you. Most holy, gracious, loving God, we ask that you send down your Holy Spirit. You send down your Holy Spirit into these elements, that these elements might be filled with your love and your grace, your mercy, your joy, your hope, your justice, that we might partake of them as resilient people going out into the world and sharing your love, grace, mercy, hope, justice, joy. In all your many holy names we pray. Amen. I invite you to partake of this meal of love. See back in the house. Chico prepares to bring the offertory plate. I invite you to be as generous as you possibly can. Let the work of 
Island United can continue not just in this room, but outside the room and the various things that we do. Right. We are the divine expressions of love. We answer our prayers, we care for, when we care for the communities, and we protect the land who nurtures us. With prayful spirits, we gather our offerings that God's kingdom might come. Let us present our offerings of commitment and support for the work of Island United. Let us sing the doxology. Before we offer up to Mula the green that feeds her and feeds the world, we have a special offering. So, Lee, do you want to come up here? <laughs> or do you want us to come back to you? No. They want, they want to come up, they want you to come up here if you'll come up here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Where's my ball? Okay, well. <laughs> hey, um, Lee, I just want to wish you a happy birthday. I'm really excited to be able to witness you turn 90 years old. And you know how I know your birthday, right? You and my mother. Yeah, you and my mother were born in the same year. So I. Um, I hope you have a fabulous celebration of your day. Thank you. From the bottom of my heart, I wish you a happy birthday. For she's a jolly good fellow. For she's a jolly good fellow. For she's a jolly good fellow. That nobody can deny. Yay! And for those of some of you to take with you, they're a token of our love and appreciation for your service to the church and your, your wonderful personal and family life. We won't make you carry them right now, though. <laughs> do, you have, do you have anything you would like to say? No, I just want to get my ball. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I thank you for those kind words. I really appreciate everything you said. It's my heart. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lee. My birthday's tomorrow. <laughs> I have three. Um, I have three. My sister Jana will be um, 70 on the 28th of July. And my uh, nephew Sean would have been uh, 46 today, but he passed away a few years ago. Um, and for me. So. Oh, good month. Good month. Good month. Oh, here comes Tim. Hello. Uh, my daughter Maria and her husband. Uh, Are there any others? Anybody from outside in Zoom? Yeah. Well, I don't know what Oh, well, you can owe it. You can bend it. Here is for my husband's birthday on July 10th and July birthday on July 16th. Yes, yes. So we have July birthdays. All these, uh, what are you? Cancer. Cancer. Yeah, you don't quite, you're not quite Leo's yet. Yeah, I'm Leo. She's Cancer. All right. <laughs> okay. Let's get so all the Cancers and Leo's. Woohoo! Sit it down. 
And that that that's all I believe. So, okay, probably. So I know. And let us let us now sing the happy birth anniversary song. Bread of life, when we ask for a fish, you do not give us a snake. May our communities be the same, offering each other relevant and need-based care. Forgive us when we act like we know the needs of others better than they do. May we instead listen to the wisdom reciprocity teaches us. Amen. Reciprocity. Yes. And Carolyn Henry says, happy birthday, Lee. Happy birthday, Lee. Thank you, Carolyn. Okay, now it's that time for announcements. Many of them are, all of them are also up here on the screen, you know, in your order of worship. So if you take that home, you'll have these with you. We continue our uh, chat and chew book group, 130 Tuesdays. Uh, we are uh, discussing the book of joy, lasting happiness in a changing world, uh, a conversation with the Dalai Lama and Bishop uh, Desmond Tutu. Uh, we know that, uh, especially these days, we could use some more joy. Um, we are uh, in the third section, or the second section of the book, the end of the second section. So if you'd like to join us, please do 1.30 on Zoom. One o'clock, the Knitting and Crafts uh, chat group meets uh, on Zoom as well. Knit, needlepoint, crochet, crafts, cross-stick, pay bills, that's what they say here. Uh, just have be together and do what you do and have a conversation. And the uh, passcode and the meeting ID are also in the, the order of worship. Uh, Foster City, uh, City Summer Days, coming up on August 20th and 21st. Island United Church is going to be, is, or is a sponsor of the event, and we will have a booth there. So if you would like to be an ambassador of Island United um, on Saturday or Sunday between 11 and 5, please let me know. Uh, we'll sit there, be, have smiles, tell people and invite people to church. And to, welcome to our friendly home where people can be loved. As we know that people need a lot more of that too. Saturday, August 27th, again, the Congregational Church of Belmont is having a yard sale for RIP medical debt. It is a function of the UCC, which relieves medical debt for those in need. If you have some tchotchkes, some clothes, something you would like to uh, donate to the cause, uh, you are welcome to uh, call uh, Belmont and help uh, sell them there because you can be the barter person or we can donate them just let let me know or uh we, or let them know and of course with this uh latest round of covid uh we are urging you to get the free tests that are available if you ordered them before order them again and they will be delivered to your house from the government free of charge i want you to thank the staff and the volunteers all those who helped to make the service happen. I want to thank you. Oh, yes, Ed, sorry. I'd like to just <laughs> <Just print>. walk. <laughs> uh, I want to re uh, recognize uh, Brian for coming down and they, uh, we fixed the door on the roof. Oh. And then just as he left and within two minutes, Tim showed up. And so he and I redid the shed because they, they had been repacked and it was unusable shed. All right. Done, so. Well, thank you. Just, thank you. Just two people on a Tuesday evening that did a little work for the church. That's lovely. Thank you, Ed, for lifting that up. Man. I have a couple announcements from the Peninsula Multi-Faith Coalition. Um, <laughs> Don't worry, you're not on camera. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one one is um, 
There's uh, two days of service, community service. One is August 13th and 14th. I'll send information to Michael. He may have put it in the bulletin. Uh, uh, yeah. And, and uh, um, one of the projects is a, is a community garden at Hillsdale High School. Hillsdale High School has 20% uh, of the students are uh, low cost or um, lunches, and they're, they're planning a garden that's been designed by um, a recent graduate and um, uh, so that they can grow food, the children can, the young people can be in community, but um, there's projects there um, both um, August 13th and 14th. And um, the other one is there's a um, or, um, an event, it's a, about, it's a Peninsula Temple uh, Shalom. It's a faith discussion with six very different um, uh, faith houses talking about the concept of God. And we're trying to do that every quarter. And this particular one is, uh, and I think you can also access it by Zoom. It's on um, August 18th. You think, I think that's also in the uh, newsletter, right, Nancy? Right. We put those the Peninsula Multi Faith Coalition stuff in the newsletter. So if you have a copy of the electronic newsletter, that stuff should be in there. So thank you again, everybody, for lifting up your announcements. Thank you for joining us. As I've said before, if no one joined us, I'd be just here talking to myself. And, uh, <laughs> And I could do that at home in my pajamas. <laughs> so thank you for joining us and may you go out and be blessed. Let us sing Nearer My God to the number 488.
directly after the service, we will be celebrating Lee out on the patio. So please join us for some cake and coffee uh, and some other juices or treats. My friends, let's go from this place, carried on the breeze of the prayers set on our behalf, nourished by our spiritual practices and invigorated for the work of loving the world. Go with God who meets us this day and always. Amen.